Hi everybody, I'm Tim from troutandfeather.com and as you can see, I am in beautiful Iceland. I mean, there is nothing better than this fly fishing for Arctic char and brown trout. And now I'm gonna bring all of you a special treat because as you can see, we have a guest for today's episode. Listen, my Icelandic is terrible, so let me have him introduce, introduce himself to all of you. Hi guys, my name is Eilur Kristjánsson. I work with uh, Fish Partner, I'm a fly tire, fly fisherman here in Iceland. It's been having a great time, and we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, fly tying, fly fishing. Yeah, you got it. Now listen, he also has a YouTube channel. Check the description down below so you can find out more about that channel. But today, we are gonna pick his brain and find three of his favorite flies for Arctic char. Definitely. All right, cool, stay tuned. All right, we're not gonna have a lot of banter before sharing these flies. I know you wanna know the three flies. I do too, I haven't heard them yet. So without any further ado, and in no particular order, oh. go ahead and share one of these. Okay, my first fly I'm gonna to mention today is a Icelandic fly called uh, Krókurinn. Uh, Krókurinn means hook in Icelandic. It's by an Icelandic fly type called uh, Gilvi Kristjánsson. Uh, sadly passed away quite a few years ago, but left a big legacy in fly tying and fly fishing in Iceland. So Krókurinn for Arctic char, uh, it's one of those flies that always catches Arctic char, almost, almost, almost yeah. always, yeah. Yeah, cool. Is there any special way to fish with the fly? Slow retrieval, uh, as is often the case with Arctic char, especially here at Lake Thingotlot. Yeah. Slow retrieval, uh, I don't know, That that's the way to catch that's fish. That's really it. Now, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because we're at the lake right now. Uh, I had a chance to fish the highlands mm -hmm. and the lake. Yeah. Is this a pattern you would fish both in moving waters and the lakes? Definitely. Here at the lake, I'd fish uh, just with a brass bead. Uh, if I was fishing the highlands in you know, running water, I'd probably put a tungsten bead. Okay, so yeah. brass or tungsten, yeah. perfect. The last thing we'll mention, then we'll get on to the next fly. Yeah. Um, you mentioned a slow retrieve. Yeah. And it's funny he mentioned that because as I finished on my bead today and we were walking up, we were talking about the notion of retrieving. And he said, a lot of Americans, that's us, we tend to retrieve really fast whenever we're here in Iceland fly fishing. Yeah. Um, what's a suggestion you have for this retrieve? How can they slow it down? What's something that you tell people? There's something called uh, figure of eight retrieval. Okay. Yeah. That's the best one because yeah. you keep constant uh, contact with the fly and you can always feel the, you should be able to feel the take. So, on the bite. That's perfect. Yeah. Not only are you learning about flies, but you're also learning fly fishing tips. Definitely. Now we have a second pattern for all of you. What do you got for us? So the second pattern is uh, quite a new fly. Uh, another one by an Icelandic fly tire called uh, Sigurður Kristjánsson. Uh, fantastic Icelandic fly tire. It's called Breiðan, uh, the fly. Uh, it's a classic Icelandic nymph pattern because we love the vinyl rib. Okay. It's also uh, part of the uh, fly Krogurin, which, which we spoke about earlier. Uh, Fantastic fly, it doesn't really imitate anything. Maybe, might be a Mitch, might be a Nymph, yeah. but yeah, fantastic fly. All right, just one of those. Yeah. You know the questions I'm gonna ask now. Um, moving water, lakes? Definitely, yeah, both. Both? both yeah. Perfect. Any fishing techniques for this one? Uh, same as with Nymphs in general in Iceland. Slow retrieval. Uh, I, tie, I like to tie it with a tungsten bead, okay. whether I'm fishing uh, streams or lakes, uh, because we try to keep uh, the profile as slim as we can when we tie it. Yeah and with a small tungsten bead, it gets down a bit faster. So that's definitely the way to go. All right, cool. And I have a couple other things I want to mention. Yeah. We, we're fishing the lake today. Um, we came here with the expectation that we're going to catch these monster browns and we're going to be using these giant streamers. And that was really, I mean, completely far from the truth because <laughs> we were throwing dry flies today for them. We were throwing small nymphs. So if you are coming to Iceland, do your homework because there are a lot of opportunities. But now I got to pick your brain from a fly tying perspective. Yeah. You mentioned tungsten beads. Yeah. Favorite bead colors? For me, yeah. uh, when I started, it was gold and brass, uh, copper, sorry. Yeah. Now, I, maybe it's a superstition or something, but when the sun <laughs> is out, I tend to go uh, with a dark bead, black or, or gun smoke or something like that. Yeah. For char, char are like grayling, I think. They like hot orange, they like pink, and all kinds of uh, high visible colors. So definitely or an orange bead or a pink bead also. Yeah. Oh gosh, those are some keepers. Yeah. All right, two flies down, let's get to number three. What do you got for us? So the third fly I'm gonna mention today is the fly that if, if you know somebody in Iceland or anywhere who's gonna start fly tying, in Iceland we tell them tie the peacock. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, it's a great pattern to imitate uh, the cased caris. Uh, it was tied by Kolbeit Grimson, uh, a late fly tying legend here in Iceland. It's such a simple fly, it's just the hook, the beat. You can even leave out the beat if you want. Yeah. But the hook, a couple of hurl, uh, pico curls, yeah. and maybe an orange color, and you're done. Wow. So, yeah. Oh, gosh, that's simple. Yeah. Uh, char, brown trout? Both. Definitely Both. salmon as well. Okay. Even, yeah. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we yeah. didn't get into salmon a lot this no. this talk, at least, and for sure this trip. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. Uh, what size hooks do you like to tie this on? So, the best way to find the correct size is just to look under the rocks okay. at, the, at, at the beats you're fishing. Generally, maybe 10, size 10, size okay. 12, and smaller, then you're not quite imitating the case caddis. In okay. Iceland, so. All right, cool. Well, I hope uh, as we were talking about this, you probably saw a picture of the cases of the case caddis. That's when I was up in the highlands. We were flipping over these rocks with our guide biscuit, and we flipped over these rocks, and you you're looking at them right now. They were just covered with these cases. Yeah, Some yeah. had the caddis inside them. Now, here's the one thing I will mention. You might laugh at this. I know everyone there will. <laughs> we undid the cad the caddis case, yeah. and they're probably looking at the picture now. It's wiggling in, in my guide's ah, hand, yeah, yeah. and I looked at it, and I said, now I know why I just cut that brown trout on a mop fly because it <laughs> yeah, looked yeah, like yeah. a cream mop to me. That's yeah. exactly what it looked like. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's really cool to know that. Yeah. Any fishing suggestions for the peacock? For the peacock, uh, a cased caddis, they are stuck to the stone. Yeah. So no twitching, no, you know, really slow retrieval, as we have mentioned before, figure of eight. Yeah. Try not to move it, but try to keep in contact with the fly. That's basically that. Sounds easy yeah. enough. You got three of his best patterns. Definitely. They shouldn't be too greedy. Are we oh. going to give them a bonus fly or not? Yeah, sure. Oh, let's let's, let's keep this going. What's number four? This will be the last one, maybe. Yeah, let's go. So, uh, Arctic char fishing uh, in Iceland. Uh, if you're fishing for local Arctic char in the highlands or at the lake, you are basically imitating catices. Okay. Uh, that's uh, what they feed on, especially at the lake. So, I have a caddis pattern quite new. It's not a direct imitation of a caddis, but I call it a caddis. Yeah. Uh, it has the implementation as, uh, as so many other Icelandic flies. We, we're right between being imitation and imitation and some kind of uh, attractor as well. Okay. So yeah, it's a nice one. Oh, perfect. Can they find that one on your YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah for sure, for well, sure. Gosh, I'm directing all of you away from my channel, but <laughs> I can tell you um, two things. Number one, all four of these patterns are found on his YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, look down below, please you know, subscribe to that, check out those videos. These are flies that will definitely work in Iceland. They'll work all around the world, yeah. I, I promise you. Um, and number two, I love that I only told him that we were gonna be talking about three, and I was able to sneak that fourth fly out yeah, of him. Yeah, so yeah. you should all be really thankful for this. <laughs> As we wrap this video up, I have to thank Eidor, very much for for doing this being on this with us thank you so much i really no appreciate it no I, I didn't have a chance to fish with you in iceland i hope to in the future yeah. uh, if any of you are interested in fly fishing in iceland please reach out to me uh, my buddy rob and i host trips here we host them through fish partner easily the number one outfitter in iceland there's no doubt about it this lake behind us is just loaded they have some prime beats we were up in the highland catching these arctic char uh, they were absolutely stunning we got some really nice brown trout while yeah, we were up there sure. i mean we had just a phenomenal trip and now to get to end it by picking his brain with fly fishing and fly tying has just been incredible. Yeah. Um, so if you're interested in coming to Iceland, um, again, reach out to me down below. You can check out Fish Partners website. All that information is down there. If you have a specific question, how can they reach you? Uh, definitely uh, hit me up uh, just with a DM on Instagram, uh, either Kristiansson, I'll answer everybody. Awesome. And if you cannot pronounce or spell his name, which I know I'm butchering it, look down below in the description. I'll have his Instagram down there. You can reach out to him. If for some reason you can't figure it out, email me. I'll get you in contact with him. Yeah. So thank you everyone for watching. One more time, thank you so much for doing yeah, this. No problem. And I hope to see all of you soon.